In this presentation, I'm going to look at the six basic time value of money cash flows and how to solve for them using Excel functions. What we'll be looking at here is the future value, the present value, and then the ordinary annuities and then the annuity dues. And what we'll have is a cash flow diagram for each and then I'll relate that diagram back to the Excel function and how we'd enter the values into the Excel function to solve for the variables. But before we do that, let's make a point, uh, note here on our interest rate and periods. So if we're given an interest rate of say 5%, we'd enter it, here, enter it as a decimal equivalent where 5% equals 0.05. And then if we have 5% here, then the number of periods would relate to, if it was 5% per year, excuse me, the number of periods relate to like five years. But if we have periods like five months, then we'd have to allocate our interest on a monthly basis. So we take our 5% per year, divide it by 12 months in a year, and then we get 0.42% per month. All right, so let's go on and look at our cash flow diagrams. All right, let's look at the present value function. Here's where we got an unknown amount, say at the end of the fourth year, and we want to discount it back to know its present value here, which would be at the beginning of year one. So here we'd use the present value function. You put an equal sign in here, and then your present value, and then within in the parentheses here, you start putting in like your rate. Interest rate would be, now remember here, if I use 5%, you've got to enter it as 0.05. And then the next number here was the number of periods and then the payment. Well, we're not receiving payments here. We're receiving a future value out here. So the payment you have to put in as zero and then the future value amount here, you put that in. And then it asks for the type here. Well, the type, well, let's go over that. If you put in a zero, if that's at the end of the period, a one would be at the beginning of the period. So let's look here at year four. If we put in a zero, that means it's at the, this payment or this value here is sitting out at the end of year four. Now, if we had a one in there, the value would be at the beginning of year four. So you have to make that differentiation. Just put in your parentheses and then hit enter and your value will come up here where you'll be able to determine your present value here. And that based on the known amount here. Okay, next let's look here at the future value function. Here we have an unknown amount at the beginning of the peer, of the our cash flow diagram and then we want to know what its future value is here at the end. That would be at the end of four, four years for this example. So here you put in your future value function, again the parentheses and then the rate, number of periods, and then this payment amount here would be zero. So we're not re receiving any payments here. We're only looking at uh, putting in the present value here. So that would be the thousand dollar here would be a present value. And then again, put either a zero or a one here. Zero means it's or calculated out here at the end the of the fourth year. One would mean at the beginning of the fourth year. Okay. Here we have four equal payments and we receive them at the end of each period. So if these were years, we'd be receiving it at the end of each year here, year one, two, three, and four. And what we want to do is we want to discount these back and determine their present value here. Now this would be defined as an ordinary annuity. So an ordinary annuity relates to payment, equal payments that we receive at the end of each period. Now, if we go up here and look at our Excel function, again we use our present value function here and then put in your interest rate, number of periods. And now you enter the payment amount here. So, and then next here, for the, it, there's no future value here. Uh, we just enter a zero. And then for the type, in this case, it was the end of each period. So we entered a zero here as well. So the zero here corresponds to the end of each period. All right. So let's look here at the next cash flow diagrams. Same thing, only that we receive the four equal payments at the beginning of each period. That would be at the beginning of each year. And we discount these back and we want to know what its present value is. Now this would be called an annuity due. So 
reference these cash flows at the beginning of each period, the equal cash flows as an annuity due. So if we look at our present our our Excel function here, it would be a present value again, put in your interest rate, number of periods, and then put in your payment amount, and then the future value of that we'd enter as zero. And then for the type here, we'd put in one. That means we're receiving the payments at the beginning of each period. Here we have uh, four equal payments and we receive them at the end of each period or in this case the end of each year. And then we're solving for their future value here, what, they're, what they'd be worth at the end of the fourth period or the fourth year. And that we would call a future value of an ordinary annuity. Now, we refer to it as ordinary annuity because we're receiving these payments at the end of each period. So if we go back up here and look at our Excel function, we use the uh, future value function again, and then you just put in your interest rate, number of periods, and then the payment here. Now, you put in that payment amount, and then it calls for present value here. Well, we don't have any, so we put, we put in zero. We're solving for the future value. And then for the type, you'd put zero in here. That refers to the payments at the end of each period. Okay, Let's look here at the next uh, uh, cash flow. Here we're receiving four equal payments, and they're at the beginning of each period. And what we want to do is we want to solve it for the future value, what it's worth out here in the, at the end, in this case, at the end of the fourth period. So this we refer to as a future value of an annuity due. Well, it's an annuity due because we're receiving the um, payments here in the beginning of each period. So if we look up here at the Excel function, we're using the future value of function again. You just put in your interest rate, number of periods, and then your payment here. And then it calls for a pr little present value, but that would be zero since we don't have that. We're solving for the future value. And then the type here, you put in one. That means you're uh, get receiving the payments here in the beginning of each year or each period. And again, we refer to that as a future value of an annuity due. And it's an annuity due because these payments here at the, are at the beginning of each pe period. So that's just a summary of the six basic uh, cash flows and how we'd use the present value and future value functions in Excel to solve for them.